The Virginia Museum of Fine Arts is the 10th largest comprehensive art museum in the country. Located in the City of Richmond's Museum District, the VMFA is a sought-after staple destination for many tourists and residents alike who seek enrichment from the arts. The Museum District is also known as the Upper Fan, a section of the city slightly further away from VCU's campus. The streets and buildings are further apart, allowing space for the colossal building while instilling a sense of escape to a more refined, higher status, and educational space. The VMFA is ingrained into Richmond in an easily accessible way, with a stoplight at the front entrance allowing cars to effortlessly enter and exit from the parking deck and forcing others to stop and marvel at the modern building. Major renovations took place in 2010 by architect Rick Mather, with the new building sitting unapologetically modernistic in every way, combining exterior surfaces of marble with large expanses of sheet glass. This replaced the older, classical-style exterior and also oriented its main entrance towards the museum's parking garage. This new orientation allows for a much more natural arrival to the museum. Many visitors arrive on foot, however, and are greeted by the stunning Robin Sculpture Garden. The Sculpture Garden surrounds the main entrance to the building and adds an intermediary space where art is present but has limited attention drawn to it. With seating areas and comfortable grass, the garden is a bustling social hive drawing picnickers and other people, some of which never even enter the museum. Upon entering the museum, a visitor meets a long entrance hallway containing another side hallway to the museum cafe, security guard checkpoint, coat check, museum shop, and information desk, in that order. The museum separates its logistical activities from its artistic ones, allowing visitors to organize their visit. At the end of the hallway, they enter into the Cotrain Atrium and begin their first interaction with the art through a large lighting installation at the far end. Although there are no galleries on the first floor, glass paneling allows the visitors to see partially into some, inviting them to explore. This vast space illuminates the museum's layout to the visitor, showing the multiple glass walkways overhead that link the galleries above. There are also ample maps and diagrams that inform the visitor of the museum's organization. The first floor is an interesting choice by the VMFA as it contains very little artwork and mainly commercial activities. This could be viewed as the VMFA highlighting its financial endeavors or as a mere separation from the art that serves to heighten its importance. After the atrium, the visitor journeys upstairs, either using two glass elevators or multiple staircases. Once upstairs, the visitor is faced with an extensive arrangement of galleries, but with very little clear path or set journey. This confusion and lack of flow can interrupt the visitor's connection and immersion with the art. However, the VMFA accommodates this by having the galleries so well distinguished from one another. All the display techniques vary from one to the other, striving to match the overall tone and ambiance of the art they are displaying. For example, when moving from the European Tapestry Hall into the Byzantine Wing, the decorative artways change from rectangular to curved. As you move deeper into that section of the museum, even more unique spaces are used. For example, this octagonal room, which does not appear anywhere else in the museum. Also, the material used to compose the physical composition of the room, such as the floor, changes between galleries, a technique often gone unnoticed by visitors, but is very effective. As we journey through the museum, we can see other techniques being used to distinguish each gallery, such as the changing of color schemes to match the colors of the art, and placement of center items, like columns and large mosaics. These objects placed in the middle are often of higher importance and fame, such as a sarcophagus in the Egyptian exhibit or Hindu statues in the Eastern Wing. Visitors always stop to look at center objects, emphasizing the potential for an enthusing experience. The distinguishing of spaces from one another is something that stems from the architecture of the building, as museum staff member Sarah Rees describes. So the VMFA was built in 1936, and this is the original part of the museum, Tapestry Hall. Um, the Mellon Galleries and the Art Deco Galleries were built in the 1980s, and then the modern galleries were built in the 2010s on the other side. Um, and so each part of the gallery was built to uh, match the art that went in each section. Her conclusions are especially evident in the newest wing in the museum, where half-size interior walls break up the rooms and create fragmented spaces, matching the abstract nature of the art present in the galleries. Mirroring the quirky architecture, unique seating arrangements are used in these galleries, the likes of which are not seen elsewhere throughout the entire museum. By having the spaces match the art so extensively, a higher immersion can be achieved by the visitor, heightening their contemplative 
and enthusing experiences. The galleries are interrupted throughout the museum by social spaces like this currently unoccupied plaza in the middle of the African wing of the second floor. Even though they are used only for special events, the presence of these spaces insert a social tone for the visitor, encouraging them to be more interactive. The VMFA also uses an extensive amount of exhibit narratives, with long explanations accompanying each room, as well as individual markers at each of the artworks throughout the entire museum. These slow down potential visitors' journey through the museum and help to deepen their understanding. Although interaction and immersion is a pillar throughout the entire VMFA, the Fabergé exhibit takes it to a new level. With the largest public collection of Fabergé items outside of Russia, visitors are captivated not only by the art, but by digital interaction opportunities. A closer digital look of the five eggs is available as well as the opportunity to browse a collection of visitor-created eggs and to create your own egg. A ground-up education style is adopted as visitors learn more about their art while also getting to visualize their own personal creation. Another good example is found in the Rhythm of Art exhibit, where visitors can choose information they want as well as interact with more digital interfaces. Finally, interaction is brought to the visitor in one of the VMFA's temporary exhibits, prints from the Frank Razor collection. In this exhibit, visitors are offered magnifying glasses in which they can view the art with closer inspection. Engaging the visitors by having them use tools is a perfect way to encourage higher connection with the art as they literally have to take a closer look. High interactivity with the artwork is something the VMFA excels at and is part of why the museum is so popular. By creating unique spaces that match the tone of each separate gallery, the museum immerses its audience into the world of the art, rising their contemplative and enthusing experiences while also allowing for a strong social experience with frequent social spaces and two dining areas. All three experiences are balanced. As a public institution funded by the Commonwealth of Virginia, its broad-reaching experience potential matches its mission statement, and it stays away from the specificity of experiences that other museums could have the possibility of creating.